and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Sean and you are watching Ren11 Live. Today we are going to be joined by Porsche photographer John Rampton, who is an absolute dude and he's based uh, very locally in the UK actually. So it's great to have someone that I know personally and I've known for quite some time. On. Anyway, without much further ado, I see his name come up. So I'm adding him into the question. Any questions you have for John, and you're going to want to ask some questions, please uh, make uh, answer, uh, write the questions on the little question mark box down the bottom there. And here we have the man with <laughs> an obscene amount of Hot Wheels cars behind him. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? Yeah, not too bad, mate. I'm just trying to get a little bit more charge in my phone. <laughs> oh, awesome. It's, it's not like you didn't know that we were going to interview you today, but no. don't worry, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> operation and planning and all that. Ah, it's fine. Don't worry, man. It's all good. Um, you're inside the house. I do not have access to. Uh, I guess I could turn my car on and piss off the neighbours. So why not? Um, how's things, man? How have you been? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um, I've been sort of relatively busy. Um, I've uh, I've still been able to work through the lockdown uh, by self isolating at. Um, location where i've been doing some photography work so uh that's been oh, quite good oh spot on so at least you've been able to work during this time that's yeah that's positive cool 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 and for self-employed photographer i'd be um i'd be in trouble otherwise <laughs> yeah, that's true that exactly um here's a question like uh, just well more just to introduce yourself uh, to the masses because i know you as the guy who takes a lot of photos of a lot of porsches um yeah. but what is your your actual specific role um so i'm a i'm a commercial photographer um i, I take photos of products uh buildings interiors you know kitchens bathrooms that sort of thing um that's where i get most of my work um and then uh i do some car photography as well uh, for magazines, uh, for businesses and things like that. So, uh, and, and, you know, as a hobby as well. Yeah. But that's how, kind of how you got into it, wasn't it as well? The hobby sort of started yeah. that as well. Yeah. So I, I was, I was, um, permanently employed. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was doing photography as a hobby, uh, taking pictures of cars, uh, Porsches quite quite a lot of Porsches um, and uh, yeah I, I started yeah, a, a project to photograph every Porsche model uh, yes which is <laughs> people are you self included oh well you know oh uh, you want to take a picture of the 996 <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> well, wicked, man. well you know when it's when it looks a bit better I took the number plate off this week and uh, normally you should just have two holes in the front for the plate holder to go on. But for some reason, they wanted to make it really lightweight. So they put five <laughs> more holes in instead. And, uh, and yeah, it looks, it looks a bit shit. So I'm going to be sorting that out. But no worries. I'll, uh, I'll ensure that you get it. But, you know, just, co just make the holes bigger. And make <laughs> weight saving, you know? Yeah, proper. Maybe I can like add like an intercooler at the front or something like that, make it look proper J you know, JDM Yo or uh, Farm Brigade Yo, maybe, you know. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's start right at the beginning, man, because um, you know, we, we know we know what you do. We know that you love Porsches, but why Porsche? Why has that sort of captured your heart? Um, well I think mainly it was um my my mum had a had a beetle. Um my my dad bought my mum a Beetle as a as a sort of daily drive, and uh, my dad, being my dad, basically started modifying it right away from day one, um, and that kind of led on to three five, you know, like getting interested in three five sixes and early air cooled Porsches and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's just sort of fueled from there, really. Um, it's a sort of natural progression, air cooled VWs into Porsches. And like that. Of course. Well, I remember when you had your uh, your Beetle um, as well. That was a, a, a wicked car. You, you knew you were there because your car stood out. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah. I think I can remember the first time we met was at the Milestone Seventy One Open Day, um, yeah. which would have been 
end of July 2012, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was quite quite a while ago. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. That was that was an awesome day because you know Milestone 71, um, uh, Richie Payne, um, who is who, who works also for Porsche, um, has this side business where he he's a, an ex Porsche mechanic. Um, and uh, he works well. His his garage is amazing, and I remember the cars that were there. It was some amazing tasting. There was a lot of things that weren't Porsche, but the Porsches that were there were like, oh, this is something special. Yeah, no, it was really good. I remember Matt Matt Glassup had his uh, had his nine six four there as well. I know he's yes. watching. Uh, yeah, uh, I yeah. saw his name pop up as well. It's good to see him. Um, Matt Glassup's responsible for for a lot of um, what I do now. So if uh, if I have spent too much money. I just say it's Matt's fault, and I get off it scot free. Yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, then you 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 decided that you wanted to take a photo of every Porsche ever made, every model as well. Yeah. How many are you up to now? Um, I kind of I kind of lost count. I mean, I I works kind of got in the way. Um, but then I've been doing stuff for GT Porsche magazine for Dan. Um, so that's kind of helped. <laughs> um, He's a good lad. But yeah, I mean, the, the trouble with the project is that it's, uh, it, it's never ending because obviously Porsche bring out new models every couple of years. And, you know, um, I think I'm probably going to modify the project slightly. <laughs> Not a whole photo shoot for every single car perhaps um just so that i can try and uh try and get get it completed in in some form um but uh it's it's meant that i've met a lot of fantastic people oh i can imagine uh frank cassidy being one of them um you know uh and yeah all the 964 guys um you know just fantastic bunch really it's strange, isn't it, how the Porsche lot are, um, dare I say it, some of the more or the most friendliest, welcoming people around. And, you know, yeah. you, you could say that from outside, but once you step in and you see it for real, you're like, wow, this is incredible how, how polite, how warm and, you know, how welcoming they are. Is that something you found as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I find that... Um... Yeah, a lot of Porsche owners are very approachable. Mm. You, know, you can go to a Porsche meet and you can just talk to the guy stood next to you and it not be weird or, or get like a, you know, a sort of uh, frosty response. You know, people people love the cars, they love the brand, um, you know, and, and are quite happy to talk about it. You know, they're quite happy to talk about their cars and... Um, and many of them like to have their, their cars photographed, which is good for me. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's nice that someone wants to uh, take the time to to take pictures or, or photos of, of a car. Do you know what I mean? I remember the photos you did ages ago of uh, Mac Glassop's 964. And I'm talking about, was it late 2012, early 2013? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was um, sort of fairly on in, uh, in, in the project, really. And uh, yeah, uh, went along and, and met Matt and uh, did some uh, rig shots on his on his nine six four and yeah, there's some really cool shots came out of that day actually and uh, it was uh, it was great. What has been like the the rarest Porsche that you managed to find you didn't know existed or or the most I don't know challenging shoot that you had to have? So I think uh, well. I kind of imagined that 2.7 RS and a 959 uh, would be fairly difficult to find. And uh, sort of fairly early on, I got a message from a guy who said, actually, my dad has got a 2.7 RS, a 964 RS and a 959. And I was kind of like, yeah, okay, mate. Yeah. What? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> No, and then uh, he said, "Yeah, no, no, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll we'll sort of hook up a shoot and and come and have a look at the cars and you know take some shots and stuff like that." And I was like, "Okay, yeah." I was sort of thinking, "I'm just going to turn up somewhere and I'm going to get mugged or you know whatever." But she turned up, 
and he opened the three garages and then they were you know yeah, just wow the three garages did you say uh, i think he had four garages but the three garages that were open with with a with the uh the 2.7 964 and the 959 yeah yeah and and have you had to ever take a photograph in a in a strange sort of or the the most diverse location you've had to take a photograph in um i photographed a uh 993 rs in uh in a garage um in a, in a quite a small garage uh in the dark was it the black one no it was a bright yellow one it was a speed yellow uh 993 rs uh, that I photographed in, in in the guy's garage, and uh, yeah, that was that was quite tricky because of in a confined space and in the dark. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Um, right, so this is this is the, the reason why I wanted to have you on is you. A lot of people are worried about getting involved in a scene without having been able to, you know bring their Porsche in, whether it's a 996 or a, a G body or a 964, whatever their flavor is and transaxle if you're Dan for, um, but you have successfully been able to make a name for yourself, become very well known within the Porsche circles. And you have, well, you, you don't have a Porsche yourself. So how do you think you've managed to be able to to do that what 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 have you had to do to to get yourself to that position where you're that well known um i'm just really good at bullshitting basically <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fake it till you make it man that's that's what i do you know <laughs> uh, you know I, this is the thing I, I think you know with with, with um like i say with Porsche owners being so uh receptive to to people um i've i've just found that wherever i've been I've, I've been welcomed and it doesn't matter that i don't own a 911 you know the very fact that i've got a passion for them and i appreciate them um is all that matters really um it's like i'm an admin on on uh, porsche owners uk um so did not know that yeah exactly so you know biggest um Porsche owners uh, forum on on Facebook, mm. uh, and uh, yeah, I, I I don't own a 911. I don't own a Porsche. Yeah, don't own all. a Porsche at all. Yeah, exactly. Driven quite a few, um, but uh, yeah, don't don't own one. Um, what's the fastest one you've been able to drive, and how fast did you manage to get in it? Because uh, I know customers, because I know owners. It, yeah, it's it's very strange. They're kind of. The owners that I've met are very much like, well, oh, here's the keys. Why don't you uh, go for a drive? Yeah. And, and I'm like, um, really? Uh, I think the, the, well, the fastest I've been, fastest I've driven a 911 is in Germany on the Autobahn uh, in, my, in my friend Bruce's uh, 996 uh, Carrera 4. Uh, okay. Up to 163, I think it was. Um, and yeah, Jesus. And have bottled it then. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose you know there's certain things that happen. But it's a Carrera Four, you know. It's probably the more most sure-footed uh, 911, uh, 911 going in general, you know. But I mean, people's. I've I've borrowed uh, you know some really great cars. I've, I borrowed um, a uh, a a seventy three replica white, you know, uh, wide arched uh 9-11 uh very similar to to frank's orange car mm. uh, probably seen the pictures that I've, that I've posted a bit um and i actually i got to drive that car for five days so uh that was probably the most memorable um, awesome. 964 rs as well frank's old yellow 964 rs yes so you got to drive that to the to the new owner um as well that was that was good but i think with with uh people's cars you know when it when it's a, when it's an, an owner's car i i kind of i don't know i drive a bit like an old lady <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> it's respect I, isn't it yeah exactly it's respect thing you, you don't you don't rag someone's pride and joy um you know um i borrowed one from porsche uh one of the Porsche dealerships before you know 
that's slightly different you know this it's it's uh it's a demonstrator uh that's what they're for <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. don't say that because i bet there's a few people who who uh <laughs> who've bought those ex demonstrators thinking they're getting a deal i mean yeah. they don't realize that they're getting something that's been you know hammered more than a nail in the coffin but you know <laughs> baby <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, now let's move like back to photography a little bit. A lot of people just think photographers tend to go and find a car, take loads of pictures, and that's it, it's done. But the process and the creative process, it, it, you know, take it from someone who is still learning and trying to, to take a photograph and end up looking like it, it was taken on a potato. Um, there's a lot more planning involved and understanding and knowledge. What, what sort of things... Um, do people have to pay more attention to, do you think, as like a maybe more of a general sort of um, how-to guide uh, almost when it comes to the photography? I'd say with with car photography, um, obviously subject is is kind of like a, a big thing. Um, and then your backdrop, backdrop is, you know, a uh, pretty major uh, consideration. Um, you know, try and make sure that when you're when you're setting up a shot, you kind of look at the picture as a whole um, and make sure there's nothing kind of in the background which is distracting to the eye, or you, know, you haven't got like a pole sticking out the top of the car and things like that. Uh, <laughs> Your basic sort of things. Don't make the car yeah. look like it's shit, you know. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's um. It's one of those things you don't think about at the time. And then afterwards, you kind of think, ah, oh, I've got a pole sticking out the top of the car or whatever. And then you've got to do a lot of Photoshop work to get rid of that and things like that. You know, um, e even I make make mistakes. I mean, I've done photo shoots for, for Dan before where, you know, he's he's kind of come back to me and said, well, John, there's a reflection of something in the, you know, in the, in the window of a house that I've completely missed, you know. What was it? What was it? Of out of curiosity, uh, it was just the back end of another car. But... Oh damn it! I was hoping it would be someone doing something in the window, <laughs> like someone's back. <laughs> well, do you know what? That would probably take the the magazine from a, a rated for everyone to like a top, you know, yeah. a proper top shelf mag. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess the next thing's lighting. You know, um, try and make sure that the, the sun's not behind the vehicle you know it's it's you know in front of it and you've got the side that you're photographing lit um that's always a always a good one as well true um do you find that there's a particular better car to shoot for you know sunlight directed at it and just color yeah i mean a colorful car um so not what i mean by that is not a white car and not a black car but a car that is a you know, a colour um, is better, definitely. Uh, okay. It's interesting. I I've heard things about red being a challenging colour to... I know to film in, red's quite a, a funny colour because it's so bright and sometimes it doesn't get done... The justice isn't done on that colour. Yeah. Um, so so what sort of uh, tips and tricks would you have for someone... Like, for my car, let's say. It's guards red. It's bright as you like. Um... I'd say God, well, God's red is not actually that bad to, to photograph. I mean, if it's a sunny day, it, sh it actually looks quite nice um, in the sun. Um, you do find that um, red cars and uh, yellow cars have a kind of give a warmer colour. So uh, the, the surrounding, when you take the picture, the camera kind of almost gives it a warmer feel to it whereas blues uh and, and silvers and things like that they kind of give a a colder feel so that the camera kind of gives it more a bit more blue mm. um and uh, yeah obviously you know you can tweak that in photoshop afterwards with regards to learning the craft how old were you when you picked up your camera for the first time um, well, I mean, I've always I've always had cameras right from uh, when I was, you know, very little. Uh, I think my I, I actually looked back over this a while ago, and my first camera was 
a Kodak disc camera. Okay. The film was actually like a, a kind of disc shape. Oh my god! Yeah, 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 yeah. So the camera opened and you put this disc in and, and shut it, and it gave terrible pictures. But you know that was kind of like my first uh, my first camera, and then uh, yeah, started with uh, with film and just doing landscapes and and my first sort of car photography was done on a um little uh, co uh canon um compact camera um and uh, yeah so not an, not an slr or anything anything exotic but this little sort of 150 quid compact camera it's amazing because even back then 150 pound for a camera you, you still still like a lot of it's still a lot of money. Let's be honest, 150 quid yeah, is 150 yeah. quid. Yeah. You know, you can do a lot with that. That's a, that's a really good hour doing something you shouldn't. Um, yeah. But, you know, when did you then decide at that point, I need an SLR? What was the driving factor? Um, I mean, it was it was doing doing car photos was, was kind of like the, the push to kind of get better and get a better camera. Um, but it was, you know, still only a hobby then, so you know, the kind of, um, the money that I could put into it was still fairly limited. Uh, and then I, I kind of moved on to a, a four thirds Olympus camera. Okay. Uh, an E410, I think it was, uh, which is actually, you know, still a fairly good camera. But I think, I think the main thing is that it doesn't really matter what kind of, what camera you have. I mean, you can take stunning shots on an iPhone or, or whatever you know it's it's more about setting up the shot you know your subject matter and things like that but you know you can take really good shots uh, on a camera phone um i've seen it you know i've seen people do that there's there's actual courses on the internet for people that want to learn iphoneography as it's as it's known i believe uh and yeah. and you could learn how to take stunning photos on a phone you know, uh, yeah. and not do that, you know, maybe accidentally take a photo and it's a selfie and you see 50 chins when you like, oh, go the wrong picture. Um, yeah. That's, that's, it, it's interesting. You're not the first person I hear that's has said that it's not about the, the necessary, the, the tech that you got. It's about the subject. I remember one of the, my favorite photos that you've done is uh frank cassidy's i think it was quite recent as well it was, it's been shown recently um and it was near his um his site over in vista and it's on that bridge yeah, that yeah. leads in yeah that that's wicked man i love it's, he is so fortunate everything just seems well thought out with everything to do with that place and that area that whole way leading in i may have used that for filming a, a scene in my car a little while ago i'm not gonna you know if anyone wants to know where that was um but it's just so picturesque and you've got so many wicked points there and there just looks so industrial yeah exactly and, I, and w was that something like if we focus on that particular photo was that just something that came to your mind and you thought yeah it, this is this is perfect or did it just happen by chance um yeah i mean it's 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 a location that obviously i've known for a while because i've you know i know frank for years so um when he when he first moved in there and, and when that foot when that road was first opened um was actually after he moved in um yeah i mean lucky we, bugger <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, it was uh straight away you know driving over that bridge just was like yeah this is i mean i think i actually um he wasn't actually living there at the time he was he was still in in London and I was due to meet him there, uh, and I think I actually parked on top of that bridge and, and took a picture using my my iPhone um, of of the view. Yeah. <laughs> this is just on the top of, uh, and it's just like from that moment on, it's just like yeah, this is this is the place that they hit car photos uh, when you're over at Frank's. <laughs> so, would you? How would you explain to someone who? it may be thinking about taking a step forward in the craft. What would they, or what should they do a with gear and B with learning? What avenue should they go on and how should they learn about, you know, getting better with the craft of photography? Um, 
I think I think YouTube is quite a good good source of uh, tutorials for, um, for all everything. Um, you know, and I think probably I, I I mean I learn everything from from YouTube and from reading books on uh, photography. Uh, it was a, a friend of mine, Josh Mackey. He wrote a a book fairly early on on how to photograph cars basically i think that was that was the title of the book was how to photograph cars and that was uh you know one of the one of the big um factors in in learning car photography but also the various forums on uh, car photography as well i know uh easton chang who's uh you know he's a huge car photographer um he used to hang around in some of the forums and, and stuff like that and all these guys are just, um, you know, really good at, at giving advice uh, and sharing knowledge. Um, you know, and it's, it's something that I kind of, I like to pass on as well. You know, if somebody's wants to know how do you, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? You know, how did you shoot this car? Then I'll tell them, you know, if they can go and take a better photo than I've taken, then that's brilliant. You know, that's, that's what we want to see. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, 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 I suppose that's that's interesting because there's a lot of people with the mindset of competition and competing. I, I know, I know of certain photographers who. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best, most politically correct way of saying this, <laughs> which is a struggle for me because you know I'm not politically correct <laughs> at all. Okay, now how about they? They may not think it's nice that so many people have cameras these days and everyone has access to a camera we've already discussed this with the fact that we've got iphones that have great cameras out the box you know you can with the portrait mode add an incredible depth of field and now you can even change the aperture um to give real real great depth um and you know although you can tell when it's really doctored when when you know it's a greater number it's actually not too bad it looks very well done um but he, that person seems to think that it's, you know, there's too many people in there and most people are shit and, and that's it. And it's almost like that's, that's not great because that's, that's kind of demeaning about what their desires and their dreams are, you know, whatever those may be. Because as we know, photographers, unless you, you really hit the, you know, the big leagues, if you're like your Larry Chens and, 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 and whatnot, it's not the biggest money spinner, is it? No, it's not. No, no. Art photography. Um, it, you know, it, it doesn't. If you can get in with a manufacturer and you're doing advertising shoots and things like that, then yeah, okay. The, you know, you can earn some decent money. Um, I know a, a friend of mine, Tim Wallace. He does a lot of stuff for uh, the likes of Aston Martin and things like that. You know, he's he's earning uh, a decent wage from it. But you know, magazine stuff is you know it's not well paid but it's more about getting your name out there um and it's just you know the, the feeling of opening a magazine that's come through your letterbox and seeing your shoot on the front cover is just you know you're like this is cool you know? I hear you. yeah i get that i've 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 had i've i've written in magazines uh, i had a couple of um uh, features in a magazine uh, written up and that pride like you'd say uh, it, it's probably different for you know a photographer because you could be fortunate enough and you have been fortunate enough to have your car front and center on the front cover of a magazine and yeah. that magazine is available to you know everyone they could look at it it passes people's eyes in in like tesco's they're probably not even paying that much attention but subconsciously they're probably thinking nice car i mean Do you I... know what i mean yeah, I I I, uh, I went into a petrol station and bought three copies of uh, <laughs> of the guy who was serving me, and I was like, I flicked to the page, and I was like, that's my. I took those photos, and he was like, yeah, okay, that'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give a shit, <laughs> but I saw him anyway. <laughs> uh, they they just don't understand. Well, that's fine, right. mate, but you got to pay for the magazines, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think that's a that's a creative kind of drive isn't it you know when you create something and it's really good and then it's not just if you you think it's it's good 
And then someone else thinks it's good, good enough to then be put onto something as global as a magazine, uh, you know, a national as a magazine newspaper on the internet on something that gets a lot of hits. Yeah. That can't be beat. That, that feeling that someone appreciates what you've done, your eye, your attention to detail, your view, that story you've told. Yeah. It's incredible, man. So, yeah. and that's the thing. Uh, for anyone watching, John's a real hustler. John works fucking hard uh, at his craft and he's done such an incredible job. You know, I, I highlight the fact that I met John eight years ago and he was, you know, taking as many pictures as he could, really friendly dude as well, and welcoming. And if you want a model of a good photographer, not just in craft, but also persona, this is the man. So if you do need, um, <laughs> you know, like any sort of person to, to, to speak to about that, this is your guy. You need to follow him if you're not following him. There you go. Um, and that'll be a tenor, mate. Yeah. No yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it's, it's awesome that, you know, you're doing as well as you have and, you know, you, you're getting bigger and, and better. And it's just, it's awesome to see how well you've done, man. Really well done. Um, now, I want to touch upon something else that may not necessarily be Porsche related too much, but I know you've, uh, it's something that's very, close to your heart and very personal and it's a teddy bear run yes yeah yeah and and this is something i think is, is really important i really want to sort of uh, uh other people to have an understanding of as well so so tell us more about teddy bear run yeah so um basically we set up teddy bear run in in 2012 uh it's a fundraising organization um we we put on events uh most automotive events to raise money for children's charities so uh, we will start you know, have a start location. Uh, we'll we'll charge people. Uh, I think we're up to thirty five pound now to enter. Uh, for that, you get a teddy bear, you get a sticker pack, uh, and then we drive from that location to a end location uh, with you know a whole convoy of cars. Um, and I think in twenty twelve, the first teddy bear run that we had. Uh, me and this is me and Wesley is my uh, uh, partner in this. I, sh I should mention him. Um, we we had twenty five cars. Um, yeah, one of them was a tractor as well, uh, which was which was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but now a tractor. Like, yeah, why not? I take it that was the lead car, wasn't it? Just to annoy the people. Yeah, no, mind. off like twenty minutes before everyone else because uh, he could only do like thirty. Up the dual carriage. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Um, but now we're we're at the point where we're we're oversubscribed. You know, we we're, we're trying to, you know, the last uh, teddy bear run we did just before Christmas, we had to limit it to, um, you know, I think we had 110 cars, uh, and our reserve list was another sort of 30 cars. And it's it, we we include everybody. You know, we don't care if you drive a Ford Fiesta or a Ferrari Enzo, you know, we, you all get treated the same. Um, and you all drive together, you all park together. You know, we don't stick like the Fiesta down in the bottom of a field somewhere, you know, they're all sort of pro place. Um, and, and I think that's one of the things that the people love about it, that get involved and, and keep them coming back year after year. Uh, anyway. It's awesome. It's, I, I love the fact that it's so welcoming and I also feel very, um, what's the word? Disappointed in myself for not doing anything regarding it sooner. So, uh, when the next one, whenever that is, I'm throwing my money at you. Um, Great, you I, I, I want the Teddy. I ain't going to lie. It, it's the only <laughs> thing that comforts me at night. So, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I think it'll be nice to have, um, what, why did you decide to, to start Teddy Bear Run? What was the, the driving factor of, you know, your story behind it? So we, um, my, my son had, had been born in, uh, in 2012. Um, and we knew sort of fairly early on that he had a few difficulties. Uh, we didn't quite know at that stage how, you know, how many difficulties he would have. But we knew there was something wrong, and when we were sort of we had ongoing tests and stuff like that. Um, so me and uh, a friend of ours, a friend of mine, 
um, I'd, I'd contacted a, my friend Russ and said, look, you know, do you fancy doing like this, uh, this Christmas toy run? Um, and he said, oh, you know, I, I can't make it, but my friend um, Wesley is, is keen to do something. So I'll put you two in touch. And that was it. You know, we got off, got on like a house on fire and uh, we were, we were actually too late to sign up for uh, the, this toy run that we were, we were trying to do. So he sort of said, well, you know, let's, let's do our own thing. Um, his, his wife already had a connection with Chestnut Treehouse through Barclays. Um, and uh, we decided that we were going to do something for them. Uh, and, that, and that's when we ordered the, you know, arranged the first uh, teddy bear run. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and every year it's been going on from strength to strength, hasn't it? Yeah. So uh, we still do the the December run is still to Chestnut Tree House. Uh, they're down in Arundel, West Sussex. Uh, and then in the summer, we've we've been kind of alternating through a diff few different children's charities. Uh, we've we've done some stuff for the North Hampshire Deaf Children's Society uh, because they they supported us hugely with Harry uh, being profoundly deaf in in sort of early days, and we actually raised enough money for them to become a charity. Um, they were just an organisation before that, um, and to to have charity status, you need to have five thousand pound in the bank before you can uh, become a charity. Um, so we we raised the money for them and you know it, it's meant that they could go on and do more stuff uh, apply for more grants and things like that which is which has been fantastic um, and in the summer more recently we've we've been supporting Sebastian's Action Trust um, who have also supported our family um, you know hugely uh, as well um, and again you know sort of a smaller charity that you know, they don't have, you know, massive amounts of government funding. Um, you know, the government give these charities hardly anything, if anything at all. Um, so they rely on fundraising and stuff like that. Uh, and at the moment, during these times, of course, there's no events, fundraising, there's no nothing. So, you know, um, yeah, they're really struggling at the moment. Maybe there's something that we can organise or I can assist in organising that we can do online or something. I don't know. Maybe there's something that we can, you know, possibly generate um, something. Just just something. It doesn't... I know charity doesn't have to be huge. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Well, we'll, t we'll discuss that after. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, <laughs> say, that, say that again. Virtual car meet, Dave, uh, Dave Watson has said, DPW photography. Oh, good old Davey D. Yes. Uh, well, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about how, what sort of capacity we could do it. Um, and maybe we should look to do something like a teddy bear run thing. Uh, I'm more than happy to, to, to be a channel within that, you know. I want to ask about the Hot Wheels cars. I know yeah. I, I know I jump from subject to subject, but welcome <laughs> to my head. <laughs> yeah. So come on. How many have you got? Oh man, I've got so many. I've got I've got all of the cars on the wall behind me, and then I've got you know um, I've got cars everywhere. There's, there's you know they're just all around my office. Um, you know, this is quite cool. This is a oh that's a new one. That's only come out this year, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it was like this year or last year. Um, so yeah, that's quite cool. Yeah, if you want to be in Dan's good books, you could always give it to him. Yeah, I could send down one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, black nine nine three. Um, oh, this is this is quite a cool one. Magnus Walker's. Uh... Yes, I got that same one. And the toy cars, the Hot Wheels cars they have in America, are so much better than ours. The choice they've got everything. Yeah, and I know that's like well expensive what you picked up compared to like the rest of them. But in there, it's yeah. like two two yeah. bucks. Yeah. It's, uh, so I'm just going to plug in my charger because my my phone's complaining. But yeah, it's, uh, there's quite a few there on the wall. Uh, Jesus. I think everything down to sort of here is Porsches. So so all of these up here are Porsches, this, this whole lot. You make custom Hot Wheels? Yeah, I've, I've done a few, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's mainly for the uh, for the 964 guys. I've, I've done some custom 964s for them and 
there's there's many grown men with with far more hot wheels than me <laughs> yeah this well, is now now we can afford to pay the stupid prices for them that's that's the thing yeah well yeah exactly how much have they got nowadays they're so bloody dear it's unreal. yeah i mean i mean they're they're you know one pound 25 i think it is in in tesco's or whatever but you know if you actually want to buy them from collectors then yeah you're, you're paying a premium Okay, so what we're going to do now, let's go and see some questions that people had. We've got uh, Graphite718 said, what is your favourite Porsche to photograph? Oh, well, that's easy. My, my dream car is a 964 RS in, uh, RS NGT, rather, in uh, Rubystone. Um, but and I've, I've have not taken a photo? to find one yet. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. I need to uh, I need to sort that one out. <laughs> okay, so on my, anyone on my list? <laughs> does anyone know of an RSN GT somewhere? Let this man yeah. know, okay? And you'll yeah, do it. That'd be great. Perfect. It's from Wistful Philosopher. Dream Porsche, which we know. Dream location, dream backdrop to pull it all together. Yeah, so nine six four RSN GT, uh at spa. Um yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Spa. Yeah. See, I've not, I've not done spa yet. Have you done spa then? Yeah. Yeah. I've, oh. I've been around. I've, I went to spa with the uh, London 964 owners, uh, Frank uh, and a few other really cool guys. Um, and uh, yeah, awesome experience. Um, hmm. And I, I'm, a, I'm a really, really bad passenger, but um, I went around with James Stewart in his uh, uh, Maritime Blue. Uh, nice. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, he he properly properly drives that car. Um, and uh, yeah, I was I was a bit quiet. This is one of those things where you go around the track that fast. You're like, I don't want to talk to the guy because I don't want to distract him. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly did you go around Eau Rouge, uh, Eau Rouge then? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think he lifted. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, awesome, man. Um, yeah. Now, something interesting as well um, with regards to, uh, to, to to Porsche people. I've not encountered an owner yet who poodles in their car, even if it's an old one. <laughs> they, they all just seem to hammer. I, I was I was driving with the, this gentleman called Michael. He works uh, with Moss Automotive. Um, you know, their car storage business um in the south and he had an he's got his own he had his own personal 964 tiptronic and we were doing some uh runs around the twisties in wales in november and that guy now bearing in mind i'm in a 996 manual it's still new to me but he left me for dust man i couldn't catch up <laughs> with the guy i was just thinking how is he shuffling that tip yeah how, what the hell's going on I, I couldn't figure it out but there you go. Everyone likes to drive their car quite hard, especially yeah. Porsche owners. So I, I, I kind of dig that. I, I love yeah. that mentality of it's there, drive it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We've got another question here, and it is from... Here we go. Rogers Floyd. What do you think of the Samson P camera? Samson P? I don't know. Yeah. I, can't say I've, I can't say I've heard of it. I can't say I've heard of it either. I'm I'm trying to read it, thinking, is he having us on, or is it some something else that? Okay, could you um, be a bit more specific, or tell us a little bit more about it, if you can, uh, Rogers Floyd? We'll come back to the question as soon as it comes up. Yeah. Okay, we've got another question here from Ah Matteo from Motorsporters Magazine. Live photography or studio photography? Which one do you like more? Uh, well, I mean, I have to admit that I've I've not done any studio photography for for cars. Um, the only sort of studio stuff I've done really has been product photography. Um, so yeah, I have to say live photography really, um, just because you know that's that's what I'd be most comfortable with. Cool. Okay. Um, then there's your answer, Matteo. Okay, I I, I want to ask because you know it'd be nice to get an idea of. Um, you know, where I should take photos of my car for a backdrop. Where would be ideal for a red car, do you think? Um, I'd say a sort of 
you know, an industrial area, um, somewhere, you know, somewhere run down would be quite good. Um, well, to match the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, or maybe, you know, new forest is always a good shout. Oh, new yeah. forest. Nice and open, uh, mm. lots of natural light, um, you know, and, uh, yeah, just just be careful of the horses and and cows and stuff that wander around and yeah, yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for coming on, mate. And uh, I really enjoyed having you on. Um, and let's talk about Teddy Bear Run or let's do something um, and see how I can be of assistance. So uh, yeah, let me know. Right. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Good to speak right, to you. Man. No, good to speak to you too, John. Thank you so so yeah. much, man. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye, man. Thank you.